All right, guys, welcome to Psych Explained. In this video, we're going to talk about a psychological concept called schemas, and two related terms, assimilation and accommodation. So the first thing I want to do is let's create an analogy. I want us to think about the mind like a filing cabinet. A filing cabinet is extremely organized, right? All the papers and documents within each drawer have some sort of relationship. Because it's organized, it's easily accessible, right? I know which drawer to open depending on what I'm looking for. And third, it's constantly changing. I can throw papers out, I can add papers in, depending on what's happening in the world. This is like the mind. As we enter the world, we have all this information coming in from our parents and they're talking to us. We are not just doing this randomly, but we're organizing this information in some sort of mental structure. And because it's organized, it's easily accessible, right? I know exactly what to expect or look for when I go to a situation. And third, like a filing cabinet, I could add more thoughts to myself. I could eliminate thoughts. I could change my thoughts depending on the information that's coming in. So let's do a quick example together to kind of make sense of this. Um, let's imagine we are going to a birthday party, okay? And I tell my four-year-old, hey, we're going to a birthday party. He has created a mental structure in his head about what to expect, right? He knows, for example, what type of food's going to be there, right? He knows there'll be some sort of sweets like cake or cupcakes. Um, he knows there's probably going to be some sort of decorations, all right? Maybe balloons, right? Certain colors. Um, and he might also know um, things like type of activities to expect when he's there, right? So all of this becomes the documents, right, in our analogy, of a filing cabinet. And this is what we call a schema. It is a mental structure, right, or mental framework, okay, a mental framework, and there's different ways you can kind of write this, um, that helps us, to help us, interpret, interpret, and organize information, okay? So when we go to a new place, when we experience new things, we're not going to it blind, but we're bringing with it kind of this mental structure, mental framework that helps us anticipate what's going to happen. And schemas come in all forms, shapes, and sizes. For example, there are what we call social schemas, right? These are schemas of how to act in specific situations, right? Going to a library, I know I have to be quiet. Um, going to a wedding, I know what I have to wear, right? So a baseball game, I know we're going to have to take our hats off. We have object schemas, right? Learning about the world and different things. Um, knowing that, for example, furniture is not just chairs, but chairs come in all forms, shapes, and sizes. And it could also be a bed or a couch or even a lamp could fall under example of uh, furniture. And lastly, we have self-schemas or personal schemas, right? And so, for example, I'm a parent. And so I come to this world trying to think about what does it mean to be a parent, right? What do parents say? What do parents do? Um, what should a parent say in a specific situation, right? And I carry this uh, with me wherever I go. So we have schemas that are social, objects, and personal. And so then the question becomes, how does assimilation and accommodation play a role? So let's think about three different examples and apply those terms. Our first one is we have a schema for a restaurant, right? So for example, let's say we're going to an Italian restaurant, okay? So what happens? We know, even if you've never been there, that you're going to uh, sit down, right? That's given. We know that you're going to have a server, right? Some sort of waiter that's going to take your order and decide what you're going to have. Um, we know that you're going to have to wait a while, right? And then at the end of the meal, okay, we know that you're going to have to pay, right? This becomes our schema our, for what a restaurant is, okay? When we go to a new restaurant, we know what to expect. This is what we mean by assimilation, okay? Assimilation. It's when we take our existing schema, right? And when we experience new information, we can apply it so we know what to expect and what to do. So when I go to a Mexican restaurant, I know similarly that I'm gonna sit, I'm gonna have a server, I'm gonna wait, and I'm gonna pay at the end, right? Now you also notice that we don't just use our existing schemas, but we incorporate new information, right? So I might add that I know I'm gonna get bread at an Italian restaurant at first, or I might get chips and salsa uh, at the table first. So we can also kind of add information to our schemas. Now what is accommodation? Well, even though this is my you know, restaurant schema, 
not all restaurants are the same. So imagine I take my son to restaurants and then we go to McDonald's, we go to some fast food restaurant and he goes to sit down. I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you sitting? because he doesn't understand. He's got to change his schema that not all restaurants are the same because at fast food restaurants, he has to remember or think about that we go to the counter, right? We order first, okay? We don't sit down, right? That was kind of a interesting thing that he had to learn um, or that you pay right away, right? You don't pay at the end. And instead of waiting, uh, you're going to get your food very quick. Right? And while I blow his mind that I remember taking my son for the first time, is sometimes you don't even go into restaurants, right? We might go through a drive through. Okay? And so this becomes drive through, what we call accommodation. Okay? Accommodation. That not everything's gonna fit our schema, so we need to change or adjust it depending on new information comes in. So we can apply it. When new things happen, we need to change or adjust our schema. All right, let's take a look at another example. We know we see a pet here, right? And for my son and most kids in the world, uh, we see a dog. And we think that all pets are the same, right? All pets have what? Four legs, right? I know, very simple. Uh, pets have a tail, right? Um, all pets um, are furry, right? So this is his schema for what a pet is. And then for assimilation, when he sees a cat, he can assume it's a pet because once again, it has four legs, it has a tail, and it's furry. Now, what about accommodation? When I took my son to my, uh, my nephew's house, he has a pet snake, and my son's head almost blew off. This can't be a pet. It doesn't have four legs, a tail, and furry. He needs to change and modify his existing schema that sometimes pets can have no legs, right? And pets can live in cages. Okay? And they can seem exotic. Uh, and pets can, instead of being furry, pets can be smooth, right? They can have smooth skin. So we've modified our existing schema. And lastly, let's think about ourselves. When you go through high school and you go to school, you have this kind of mental framework of what it means to be successful. I thought, usually, uh, that success means, you know, work ethic, um, that it's all about being dedicated, right? If I'm dedicated, I will be successful. Okay? And I have to be on time. Right? That's going to make me successful. Um, or I need to be an honest person. Right? This is what we're always told. Right? I'm dedicated. I'm on time. I'm honest. And then when I get a job, okay, I apply those same things. I'm assimilating, which is, all right, if I want to be successful in high school and college, I'm likely to be successful in my job if I'm dedicated, uh, on time, and honest. But guess what happens? You get fired. Right? And your whole schema about what it means to be successful is blown up or how to be successful. And you might realize, changing our schema, that success is not just based on merit and on time, um, but it could be based on things like networking. Right? It's who you know, not just kind of what knowledge you have in your head. Um, or maybe it's based on the culture or politics of the workforce. Right? So there are things out of your control. So we're always changing what we think about the world. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment in the box, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time.